Joining us right now to talk more about that is the host of Michelle Malkin Investigates on CRTV.com. Michelle Malkin, it's always a pleasure to see you. Michelle, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Maria. Your thoughts on the president's trade policy here in these tariffs? Well, it, it's not a surprise. He's been signaling that uh, this is where he was going to go since uh, he wrote his book in 2011 advocating for these kinds of tariffs. Uh, he's making good on his promise to keep America first, and I know that roils a lot of uh, the most orthodox of free trade conservatives. I would say that I think that there is a lot of hyperbole and undo chicken little alarmism. Um, I would note that I'm here in Colorado and, and one of the companies that has uh, been sounding the alarm is a company called Ball Corporation, um, a maker of aluminum goods. And although their stock fell about one and a half percent last week, overall, they're up five percent. And I think I will trust uh, the market's judgment on this more than a lot of the alarmist pundits on whatever side they are on. I mean, if the market had, had fallen 10 or 20 percent, hmm. maybe that kind of chicken littleism would be um, would be justified. Uh, but I, I, I think that um, I think the devil is in the details. And as you point out, it looks like the president is, if not Peter Navarro, anyway, yeah. is opening the door to these kinds of carve-outs. And the final language um, isn't out yet, so, so we'll have to see. Uh, Michelle, it's Dagan McDowell, but it's, it's not just people, uh, kind of pundits sounding alarms. It's some of the individuals who advised President Trump on his most pro-growth, pro-U.S. parts of his agenda. And over the weekend, it right. was Art Laffer and Steve Moore and Larry Kudlow just saying to the president, Tariffs historically don't work. This could damage a lot more jobs than it actually helps. And it seems like, yes. and to boil it down, it's that you are you jeopardize harming the many, meaning Americans, to save the few. Right, I understand that, and uh, and and of course, um, as someone who is generally a free trade conservative, I. Uh, completely understand where Steve Moore and, and Art Laffer are coming from. On the other hand, because I have been uh, a vocal advocate of the sovereignty agenda of this president, I think it's un important to understand historically that there have been numerous Republican presidents over the years, particularly in the, the post-Civil War era, who were for tariffs. And uh, th there, there's, there's mixed... Um, evidence and there's a lot of internal debate on the right uh, about the the effect of tariffs, particularly on um, job creation and uh, and and prices. Yeah, I, I think that the the argument um, among uh, Trump's economic supporters who do support this is that you'll see it in the Wall Street Journal even today that that overall that this is a, a drop in the bucket um, in the overall economy. Yeah, but look, you said it earlier, Lee Carter. He's answering to the people who voted for him. I mean, the president is going to go to Pennsylvania uh, on uh, Saturday, March 10th, for a political rally in advance of the March 13th House special election. They're going to be cheering on this. There's no question about that. I mean, I, you, I, we were just talking earlier. There's, there's an article about this in the Wall Street Journal on page three about how Pennsylvania voters are feeling about the tariffs and how this is really appealing to them. I think that the president is one who is talking to the people. He's not talking to influencers. He's not talking to certainly not the, the elites, the global no, elites. No, absolutely he's, he's not. He's going. To, he's to talking to his base. To the people exactly who voted for him. Right. Look at the steel states who are worried about their jobs in Ohio, steel. Ohio. The, these. You know, I was at an event that he spoke at on, on uh, Saturday, and the president thinks very often and very carefully about the states that went for him. He was yeah. going on and on about Ohio, Wisconsin. Pennsylvania, exactly, Michigan. Um, but these are but the people who live in those states who don't work for steel producers, who work for steel consuming industries. Right. But look at Michigan. They're gonna get, they're gonna look just... at Michigan. You have a guy um, quoted in the journal today as a supplier of metal stampings, and he said, he, I'm worried about a repeat of 2002. Again, Bush's steel tariffs destroyed 200,000 jobs yeah. because of those tariffs. That was more than the entire <clears throat> employment of the steel industry back then. And he's worried about the auto companies. But, they go to other sources. Yeah, they're well, not going to absorb the cost. That Trump in his, when Trump was campaigning, he promised to make better trade deals. Exactly. They're going to bring back jobs. Yeah. They were going to, he was going to do all of these things. Mm -hmm. And so people hear that he's making this move, and that means jobs to them. It yeah. means better economic 
um, security. And that's not made, while it might not necessarily be evidence based, that's right. what people believe. Final word on this, because we've got to get to this uh, illegal immigration story. But go ahead, Michelle. Yeah, I, I, I think this is Mr. Art of the deal, and we'll see in the end that if he gets what he wants, fair trail, trade deals, that these are not going to be interminable tariffs. And in fact, it may follow the path of George W. Bush, which, I mean, after a year, he got rid of them. If you look at the, the solar panel and uh, dishwasher uh, tariffs as well, which were an extension of, of Obama, those were phased out, too. So this mm. isn't going to last forever. All right, let's, let's move on to this other stunning story, which we've got to get your take on. An illegal immigrant in California. California has pled guilty to stealing a U.S. citizen's identity for 37 years uh, and more than $300,000 in taxpayer money. Prosecutors say that he traveled freely between the U.S. and Mexico. He avoided prosecution for dozens of crimes. He was deported twice, all because he got his hands on somebody's birth certificate and was able to get a driver li driver's license and all this stuff, also to become eligible for these U.S. benefits, $300,000. What do you make of this, Michelle? It's outrageous. It's been happening for decades, and uh, I think it certainly gives lie to the idea that this kind of identity theft by illegal aliens is some kind of harmless crime. I mean, I've reported so many times over the last quarter century since I was a columnist uh, at the Los Angeles Daily News about how this victimizes people, and they have to deal with it for the rest of their lives. It's stunning if you look at the amount of theft and the length of, of crime of this particular individual, but it's way overdue for these kinds of cases to be prosecuted, and I haven't seen uh, this kind of prosecution happen, like I said, over the last 25 years I've been uh, doing this. I think it also points to the fact that the idea that identity theft is, is seen as some sort of harmless misdemeanor uh, and that it would be forgiven by yeah. mass amnesties is, is why people are, are so angry that, for example, DACA is a priority over uh, fixing these kinds uh, of, of uh, so-called misdemeanors and building a wall. Yeah. Yeah, and by the way, the DACA deadline was supposed to be today, March 5th. But, you know, ICE agents say that they caught 232 illegal immigrants during that raid in Northern California. Of those captured, 180 were convicted criminals, Michelle. Uh, they had either been ordered to leave the U.S. or had been deported before. 115 of those were felons. So ICE is claiming it could have arrested up to 800 more if the Oakland mayor, Libby Schaaf, did not send out a public warning beforehand. So are these the kinds of people that that mayor of Oakland is protecting? Yeah, that's right. It is a safe space for all kinds of felons, including violent criminal felons. It is a felony, by the way, to aid and abet illegal immigration, and that mayor should be prosecuted. She is a criminal, not in a sanctuary city, but in an outlaw wow. city, and she should be behind bars. All right, Michelle, we'll leave it there. Great to have you on the program today. Thank you, Michelle. And congratulations on winning several Hollywood International Independent Documentary Awards last week. For your program, Michelle Malkin Investigates. Great job, Michelle. Thank you. We'll see you soon. We'll